Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, coming at you from the 2024 SHOT Show. All of you are familiar with Core Technic. It's a brand that I've been working with for over a year, but I want to introduce my viewers, all of you, to um, Olaf Kluke from Zargus Cases. And you guys are manufacturing aluminum hard-sided cases. You're not new to the firearms industry. You guys have been around for a long time, but your specialty has really been in custom cases, mil-spec type operational yeah, cases. Yeah. Yeah, we've been in business for 90 years now. And 90? 90. 90. 90. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Last year okay. was our so 90th anniversary. 90 years yeah. these guys have been yeah. doing this a long time. Yeah, I, that took me back. I did not realize that Zargus has been around that long. Yeah. 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 In in, uh, in Europe, we're actually a fairly household name. Okay. The people here at Zargus, we also build other aluminum products. And over the 90 years, we've built everything from um, elevators that go up the shafts of um of uh, wind towers and gondolas that take skiers up the Alps and so forth. So we've been in the aluminum business a long time. So what country but, do you originate from? Um, from Germany. Ger my yeah. husband's German. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You guys could do some talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm bisschen. <laughs> so we're having a German conversation and we yeah, should do this well, in German. Okay. <laughs> well, that's an exciting background, 90 years. So did the Zargus company start, it didn't obviously start in hard sided cases. It started no. in infrastructure. It started actually in ladders. So, and that's okay. why you have the the logo of ours with the little steps there. Uh -huh. So we've always been in the access business. So that's okay. ladder, scaffolding, that type of thing. Are you and still doing that as well? Yeah, we're still doing that. As a matter okay. of fact, cases that's are only about 25% uh, of our total business. Okay. So. so what led your company from the, you know, this, this transition from just being kind of a more of a, uh, construction based company to to hard sided cases where did you find that need you know that's a really good question um, I think it's just it, it just came out of necessity okay. you know there were cases required for the military aluminum is a lot lighter than anything else that was used at the time back then they didn't have plastic they and used, tougher yeah a lot tougher and uh, so it was just out of necessity that they started branching out into other areas and as far as the cases um, for us here in the US up until about um, you know five or six years ago, almost all of our business was military. Mm -hmm. So we built very expensive cases that are used in, in the military. They're all totally custom designed. Mm -hmm. So these are the cases that, um, you know, hold various, um, you know, defense equipment, but also mm -hmm. electronics and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, this particular case that we're standing in front of here, this is our K470 brand. Okay. And uh, this is a, a military case. It's been used for over 60 years now by various militaries all over the world. And that's kind of how we ended up here in the United States, is okay. that American military was working with the Germans and they saw these amazing cases and, and that's kind of how we got our start here in the U.S. So here in the U.S. we only sell cases. We don't sell ladders, we don't sell anything else. So that's fantastic. So you guys are making cases that will be, you know, for all types of precious equipment, which is one of the reasons that marriage with Core Technic is so beautiful because yeah. um, you can put whatever inside the case, whether it's camera equipment, firearms, any type of equipment that you want to really protect. And this case is designed to be robust and handle yeah. any conditions then. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the construction that kind of sets your Zargus apart from maybe some of your competitors. Yeah, so this is all aluminum, obviously. Um, we have the stacking corners here, the solid 
uh, cast stacking corners. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, aircraft grade aluminum, so it's it's a very high grade aluminum. And then it's it's the components. You know, the the latches themselves they require about five pounds to open and to close those. Okay. So that when this they're very robust. Yeah, very much so. And and uh, they've tested to over 20 20,000 cycles of opening and closing. Okay. Um, because, you know, once you have this thing filled, it's it's going to be relatively heavy. If you drop it, you don't want it to pop open. So you've mm -hmm. got to have the right latches. Um, on the back, we have a full uh, piano hinge, mm -hmm. which is stainless steel. So, I mean, it's just all around much heavier uh, construction than anything else out there. And these cases last. I mean, this this case, we say it's a 30-year case. We have uh, a case in our lobby in our in our uh, office that was used for 30 years wow. by a guy with the uh, U.S. ski team. So he's been carrying around the case for all, all that around time. the country. Yeah. So people could use this as luggage. I'm, like, I'm looking uh, at this. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, man, I need to yeah. check it. I need to change out my suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, they're very incredible. They come in a variety of sizes. So we're looking at this particular model here, the K470. But we also have a couple other models like directly behind us. What right. is, so you know, what are the what are the specs like when you're designing, for exa example, this case? What it, what application do you have in mind for this? It, it really depends on the customer's the customer. requirements. So this 470 product line, there's uh, about 30 different sizes of okay. this. So and you just see a couple of them here. Um, there's uh, larger ones which are off camera mm -hmm. here. Um, there's one we call it our coffin case. We could probably fit five people in there. Wow, so, it's yeah. just enormous. So yeah, so we get into some really large, but they're really the same construction okay. as this case that you see right here. Mm -hmm. So one thing I like about like this size, for example, is you could you know if you guys are going to a, a pistol match or something like that, yeah. you can have your ammo in here, your pistols in here, and yeah. even double case them if you wanted to um, with like your you know manufacturer cases. Absolutely, and, yeah. And keep everything extremely secure then. Yeah. Because yeah, that's a, that's always a, an issue. You know, you think about you know case security and what's inside and and this is extremely secure oh absolutely yeah we have a case that looks very much like this for a uh, Olympian shooter Lexi Lagan mm -hmm. and uh, we built an interior specifically for her needs and we do a lot of that the custom foam interior and so forth and uh, yeah she carries this all over the world with her well and that's what I love about the marriage with core is you know you're talking about cutting custom foam and one of the great right. things that and the, makes the marriage of Zargus and core so incredible is that uh, core can be reconfigured an infinite amount of ways so whatever you put in this case whether it's your precious camera equipment, whether it's your precious firearms, whatever you want to put in here you want to protect. When you um, put the vacuum back in the core case, the beads get soft and everything is really moldable so you can actually, you know, print whatever items in that case, pull vacuum on it and it becomes a rigid structure. So yeah. anything you want to put in here, you can put in here and putting core with that, you can literally reconfigure the functionality of these cases for virtually anything. Yeah, it's an absolute game game yeah. changer. We met GP last year at the Safari Show and we were just in awe of this product because yeah. it, it ha gives us that flexibility. Yeah. So especially in the firearms world, yeah. um, people see this case, they love it, they want it. But then the whole idea of having to create the, the foam, foam and so forth, and then next year they, they add a different scope or they make some other change to their gun and now all of a sudden it doesn't fit anymore. So, and now you have to get new foam. Yeah, so that's always yeah. been kind of a, a trouble spot for us yeah. in this particular market. Yeah. Well, and the other um, thing is you can wash it. this yeah. aluminum, clean oh, yeah. it easily. You yeah. can take the core insert out. The VRS yeah. insert comes in and out and it retrofits your existing hard-sided cases. So you pull the core VRS out, you can hose it off, wash it off. The dust will come off of it. Like it makes it to where you can take this case, take it in the field, get it dirty, beat it up, wash the aluminum case, wash the VRS insert, and you basically have a brand new system again. Yeah, absolutely. And tomorrow you could use it for your photography gear or for whatever. Exactly. You know? That's so, great. Yeah. So you guys also have a case, um, which I was really excited about for bows that fits bows very nicely. Yes. It's actually not really designed for that application. It was more designed for like an AR-15 platform, yeah. being able to stack your AR-15s if you're going to, uh, you know, you want to go do shooting for hogs or whatever it is with your ARs, but it also works really well with bows. Oh, especially bows. Yeah. Because those have been really hard to try to find a case for, you know, that everybody's got something different out there. So yeah. uh, with the core, as you know, you just mold it to the, to the product yeah. and you're, you're good to go. And what I liked about the Zargus, the, the case, that one in particular, um, that size dimension is that I didn't have to take my bow sight off right, to get it to right. fit in the case. So some of yep. the hard-sided cases you guys will see on the market from other competitors, you can put a bow in, but you have to have a dovetail on your sight and pull the sight off, put it back in, revalidate your, your zero, you right. know, all of that stuff on your bow. Um, with this, you can leave your sight on. Yeah. And then the core, you know, you nestle it into the core VRS 
this pull vacuum and it's it's super solid. Now we also introduced with Core the double panel system this yes, year, which yes. is really awesome. So instead of just having uh, the single panel where your items lay into, in nestle, can you see that? I don't know. Sure. Um, where the items nestle into the bottom part, there's actually a double panel now where you can fold over the second panel. So it literally is like a taco. So imagine like you take your ingredients, you put them in the middle and you fold over the top lid and you're making a quesadilla or a taco right. and it just fits perfectly. So top and bottom protection, this is gonna protect vibration. It's gonna protect shock. You're not gonna have slippage. You're gonna protect from the elements. And then with the Zargus case, I mean, this is just such a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. It's yeah, exciting. it is very exciting, yeah. and I'm so excited you guys are breaking this. So distribution, where do people find your product right now? Um, we sell everything out of North Carolina, Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. That's where our um, inventory is located and okay. everything. So, is it um, manufactured in Germany? It's or manufactured in Germany, okay. shipped over here, and then we do any customization, sometimes paint and so forth. Okay. But um, for the most part, we're just selling the boxes as is. Okay. So. so there is some opportunity for customization. You guys are selling them with traditional foam inserts, but you're also yeah. selling them with a combination of Core Technic VRS. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to be migrating customers more and more to the Core product. I mean, yeah. it just makes sense in yeah. so many cases. Yeah, it's so. extremely robust. If you guys haven't checked out the Core VRS, this is the this is the VRS protection system on a on a small scale to fit in this case. Um, one thing I love about this, you know, we talk about how how robust Zargus is, how it's used in military applications, the aluminum, the, the five pound hinges that make it really drop proof protecting from shock. But a lot of people are like, oh, well, what if I cut the mm -hmm. bag for the VRS? It's not going to be soft. You can literally watch GP take a knife and run it across this bag yeah. and it does not um, penetrate the system. So right. it's very, very robust. It's a perfect, really combination with what you're doing on the cases. And you guys can see this is soft right now and I can nestle and make basic basically like a handprint in this. And that's what makes the VRS so imp incredible is that an infinite amount of ways to reconfigure, making this case not just like a one and done, yeah. I can only use it for my guns or I can only use it for this or that. You can use exactly. it for anything. Exactly, exactly. Again, it changes the game. You know, this is the most expensive case you can buy. Yeah. It's the best case you can buy. Yeah. And now you can use it for multiple purposes. So we say one case, countless missions, and that's really what Core does for us. Um, we're coming well, out countless in missions, infinite possibilities oh, of configuration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're coming out with five sizes in March. Okay. Um, the one that you see here, we've got one that is um, rifle case size, and then the bow case, which is mm -hmm. also an AR case. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we cover a pretty good part of this industry right now, mm -hmm. uh, as of March. So the firearms industry has got a pretty good offering already. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So distribution, you guys are in North Carolina, yep. right? Where do people go to purchase if uh, they want to buy? ZargusUSA.com. Okay, yep. so you're direct to consumer there. Yeah, Okay. Absolutely. You guys get online, go to ZargusUSA.com, check out Zargus cases. Again, they have them with foam inserts, but I recommend you guys check them with check them out with the core VRS uh, yep. technology. You will not be disappointed. This is a great system and 90 years of history yeah. backing up yeah. the yeah. effectiveness of Zargus cases. So uh, you guys get online, check it out, and we appreciate you tuning in and joining us at SHOT Show. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. Hey you guys, Christy Titus here. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild Nun Cut Podcast. We're coming at you from the Ruger booth, our presenting sponsor, and I'm with Sharinda Britz from Wilderness, and you are doing 
your group is doing some incredible things, and you're now the vice president of the yes. organization. Yes. And what I love <laughs> about what you're doing is it's all about empowering women. I would like to think, uh, if not empowering, at least making you realize that you don't have to say, I'm too old. That's right. Or I'm too busy. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell everybody a little bit about what Wild Herness, Wild Her, H-E-R-ness, does. So what we like to do is schedule events that are geared towards any form of recreational, shooting sports, or hunting activities. But we like to make them educational. So one of the things that I love to do is if we're taking you out for a hunt, we're not just taking you out and putting you in a blind. Um, we'll schedule a weekend event where you not only get to meet the biologists of the species that we're hunting that's partnered with our local conservation, they also cover the rules and regulations. Yeah. Gives you an opportunity to ask all those dumb questions or what if scenarios with absolutely zero judgment yeah then afterwards we take you out into the habitat so you can actually see not just on YouTube or video but what to look for out in the field then we'll show you how if you're white to hunt we'll show you how to set up your blind mm -hmm. best spot to pick if you if you want to use a blind um, we give you options um, we also take you out to the range and make sure that you are comfortable with the firearm that you're using, regardless if it's your personal or a borrow. And also make sure your rifle's zeroed in, but we'll show you how to do that. And if we need to go over a little quick lesson on how to mount your scope, mm -hmm. that's what we're there for. Um, after that, we'll partner you with the mentor that we feel will best suit your personality. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like we've had women, I'm a crier and we have another mentor that's empathetic because they too are a crier, then I'm you, a guys, crier. you guys can cry <laughs> together and there's no judgment. And then afterwards, if you harvest, we'll walk you through field dressing, which is a funny story. Um, and I saw that you guys were doing that and I love that you, this is like full circle. We try to make it full circle and even if there isn't anything harvested, we still provide an opportunity where you can learn how to field dress and even do a, a field at the table. So we'll have a chef or a junior chef that volunteers their time and come in and make us a meal for the weekend. It's, it's amazing. And afterwards, when you leave, there's 7 to 12 more women that you can send a text message to. And they're your girlfriends chat now. I they're your hunt that. buddies now. That's so they're great. It's like the fellowship that you create in the field. My best friendships and my best relationships, you know, are with my friends and family and because we've spent time together, mm -hmm. because we've had these moments in our lives. Like, you know, there's such reverence that goes with taking the life of an animal and, and harvesting an animal, it especially is. coming from new hunters and new shooters. And, it, and your program's really geared towards new people, and there mm -hmm. is a lot of emotion with that. And yeah. being with people that empathize and understand you know what you're going through and are there to encourage you it's so bonding it is it is and one of the things that um, we encourage is to speak up yeah if you're not comfortable because um, I noticed us as women we're, we're very nurturing and we want to help yes. so if a woman harvests an animal and she brings it in to field dress it there'll be a swarm of women mm -hmm. wanting to come in and help and so we I was like you know that's something I need to talk about later it's always a learning experience for us too as mentors or myself I'm still new I'm not like a yeah. seasoned hunter but I still have so much to learn but with being an, an active mentor and person at wilderness I have to constantly ask myself how can we do better so now you know we're asked the women do you want us to help you? Yeah. Or do you want us to walk you through it? Because I'm like, mm. I, I, I actually watched a mentee where it looked like she wanted to tell us to back off. Yeah. But the woman in her didn't want to, like, upset or say anything. I was like, like we need to ask. Yeah, yeah, I was like, no, we, we need to ask. I mean, you, you have a choice. And also, we're, we've noticed now that we've always said tell us we don't know what you want until yes. you tell us what you so ask we don't care how mundane you think it is and, and like one of our most popular classes this year and we've not even got through the month basket weaving 
foraging and basket weaving and who's thinking I would have never thought that was something of interest but somebody asked for it yeah and it sold out we had scheduled it twice oh my gosh so it, it's, well I think Darissa crochets all the time so I yeah. can see that being a thing people do that still yeah and in you someone and I like to call them OGs may not look at that as an outdoor activity but those women went out and forged this stuff yeah. so they're a little bit more closer to nature and now that they have they're like what do I do with it well you can make a useful basket to toss yeah. your keys in and go on your end table it's not just limited to just yeah. hunting and hiking so so your right. organization really fosters a relationship with is it women with outdoor experiences but with the full fundamental of, hey, this is the conservation aspect, this mm -hmm. is the wildlife management, this yes. is the environmental stewardship that comes from yes. our hunting dollars, um, the taxation that's done and, mm -hmm. and through Pittman-Robertson Act. Yes. And so that everybody understands the full circle of how hunting is conservation and how it's benefiting the entire United States, basically. Yes, yes we do. So in addition to all this training that ladies get, um, how do they find a chapter? I mean, so I have all these ladies that will be listening and be like, how do I find a chapter? How do I find an organization? How do I get connected? Is there a scholarship program? How, what is the first steps for ladies? And we'll, and we'll all you this. have to do is reach out to us via email or social media. Um, we don't have chapters per se. We're, okay. we're based out of the Midwest. Um, if you are in a different state, um, we will try to make connections and get out to you. Yeah. We have coordinators that we're growing currently. We have coordinator and events going on in California, New York, Colorado, Nebraska. Um, if you ask us, we will come. Mm -hmm. um, we're also a not-for-profit. So um, it's just show up. Mm -hmm. If there, if you need an event in your area, if, if we can't do it, we love to partner with other women organizations or we'll refer you. Hey, we're not in that area, but you could reach out to Artemis Sportswoman. Yeah. You know, we, we love connecting women to other organizations because our big focus are, is options. Mm -hmm. And other women. Options. I'm sure that you have and alumni that have been through your program mm -hmm. and now really want to help bring in and foster yes. the same type of experience for other women. Yes, and it's, it's great to see it being um, paying it forward. Like, we now have mentees that are now mentors, mm -hmm. and it's it's just great seeing this, this new confidence that come out in the women that came in so shy and so nervous and realizing that, you know, I could do this. Yeah. I could do this. And yeah, it's very confidence great. we see, especially shooting mm -hmm. firearms, that you see it a lot where a lot of women are very scared. Mm -hmm. um, and when you walk them through a safe, controlled, responsible firearms use, they realize it's not scary at all, that they're in control and that it's fun. It is. It is. And it's, and it's nice um, with the women that recognize that, you know, just because you may be a mentor doesn't mean that you're never going to stop learning. Like, exactly. there's been a couple of women that. Um, I may not have mentored, but if, if they were mentored by somebody else and they'll text me or call me and be like, hey, you want to go scouting? Sure. I, mean, I know how to scout, but it's nice to let them take lead. Mm -hmm. It's it's nice to, to for them to see, oh, well, I get to take lead. You know, she trusts me. Oh, yeah, I trust you. And, and, yeah. and if you don't know, we'll figure it out together. That's, right. and that's the fun part yeah. for me. So how did you start hunting? Were you, were you raised in a hunting family? No, as a matter of fact, You're I was an a kid. Adult onset hunter. I am. <laughs> I, I love it. am. I started hunting in I don't remember if it was 2018 or 2019. You know, the year of the plague just kind of makes the timeline a little bit of a blur. Yeah. But um, my family not outdoors men or women never hunted none of that so and was it covid that really spearheaded you wanting to get outside the social no, distancing thing no it was cancer oh. so i had and is wasn't so i had thyroid cancer i mean if you if you're going to have to pick a cancer that's the one and mine was uh, so bad that uh, they had to remove the whole thing i had to get multiple radiations still have to get checked for that 
But on top of that, uh, when I had the surgery, I had the side effect of a paralyzed vocal cord. So I had issues breathing and I couldn't talk for a whole year because it just didn't work. So I got that repaired. And there's an implant in my throat that literally gives me the ability to talk. Only one vocal cord moves, but the other one is fixed in place and one works really hard. And I also have um, scoliosis, so it had got so bad that my hip blocked up and I couldn't walk. And I opted out of surgery, so it took two years for them to re-straighten my back so I could walk again. And the first thing I wanted to do, because I developed food allergies when they took my thyroid, I can't eat pork, and I'm allergic to most commercially processed beef. So I was thinking, well, maybe I should try honey because then I could process it myself and not have to worry about getting sick or how they're processing or packaging it. So the first hunt that I decided I wanted to do was a pheasant hunt because it was the first activity I could actually walk. It yeah. was the first time ever walking and I met a lady there who I'm good friends with to this day and the pheasant hunt was hosted by um, Pheasants Forever, mm -hmm. the Heartland of America chapter in Missouri and shot my first bird there. It was the first thing I had ever harvested and it pheasants are going to always be my favorite hunt because it was literally the first activity I could do where I could breathe mm -hmm. and I could walk and it was After everything you had overcome I'm yeah. sure it was very emotional as well. It yeah. was and I remember bringing that bird home I didn't get to cook my bird <laughs> because immediately I walked through the door and the guy that I was at that time took my bird and cooked it because he's a cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. But you got well, to eat it, right? I got to eat it and it was great, but it was it's just kind of funny of the dynamics of my family. They don't hunt, but they'll definitely come over and eat. Hey, so. hey, my husband cooks all the time. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love hunting because, you know, I have the food allergy. So, you know, if I go and harvest a pheasant and when I open it up, I like, I like to look. I don't like to smell. I thought I was weird because I like to smell my mm -hmm. harvest. If I see that it's ate a lot of soy, I'll eat it. But then I, I know that I can't eat it consecutively for three days because I'm not allergic to soy, but soy prevents you from absorbing your thyroid medication. Oh. Very interesting. So I can so eat the meal and cook it. you monitor what the wildlife you're consuming I consumes. I do. So, and that, that helps. And, or, you know, just a little biology, foraging, educational moment thing. What is this? Oh, they eat that. So I can go check that area. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's all, it's all, it's still educational for me. It's, it's still fun. Are I'm you eating turkeys it. now? Oh, yeah. it, it just got personal. No, no, there's a turkey story here. <laughs> I have yet to harvest a turkey. The first time I wanted to go on a turkey hunt was during COVID, and it was going to be in the state of Kansas, and they had shut down non-residents. Oh, Purchasing no. tags 30 minutes before I was going to purchase mine. Um, I tried hunting one last year and never came in close mm -hmm. enough, which was fine. And then this year during archery season, um, I had turkey tags. I was this was my first time sitting out in the open without yeah. a blind and there was a fog and these six turkeys literally walked five yards in front of me and hung out for thirty minutes and I refused to take a shot because there were deer right in the fog yeah. that I didn't want to spook and they were gonna if I spooked the birds the deers were gonna go a running. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's personal now. Like, oh no, you're going turkey hunting this I'm spring. I'm yeah, I'm hoping to go turkey hunting this spring and I've I've not tasted wild turkey yet. Haven't haven't tr well, I've only tried honey once, but no, I haven't harvested. So you went from okay, I have this food allergy. Mm -hmm. I have to find a different source for my meat because mm -hmm. obviously you enjoy eating meat as I yes. do as well. Yes. Who who was your mentor? How did you start hunting? I have multiple mentors. So pheasants, and pheasants forever. I always tell yeah. people if you're a new hunter or mm -hmm. you're excited about shooting sports, the best way to get involved in hunting is to go to a nonprofit, go to a pheasants forever, go yeah. to a Safari Club International chapter, go to yeah. an RMEF chapter, like go somewhere. And those people in those chapters, a lot of them 
really want to steward that next generation they of do. hunter. They do. And don't forget about your local conservation. It took an employee at Walmart yeah. making me pull out my phone and talk to me about yeah. uh, the Missouri Department of Conservation. Cause I'm a Missouri resident. And they have lots of educational free programs. Yeah. I mean, are they going to turn you into a hunter after one class? No, but it's a start. It is. A, and you it's have to start. start somewhere. And there's yeah. a lot of information to learn, which I think can be a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So how did you find Wilderness? So um, the founding members, um, we met first our original vice president. Um, she's now our chairwoman. We showed up at my second Pheasants Forever Hunt. And when I walked in the room, I was the only black woman there. I was the only black person there, so it was a little, it was a little intimidating, you know. We, we all have our, our our stereotypes, and I was like, oh, "Hey, girl, I know okay. what you feel because <laughs> I, like, I walk into a room sometimes, and I've been the only woman in the room, yeah. and you feel it's a. I'm, I can only assume it's the same kind yeah, of. Yeah, like, it's a little overwhelming. So and all the guys anxious. are here, and I'm the only girl, and. Yeah. And no one was unfriendly or unwelcoming, but um, my buddy JB, she looks over and she goes. Hi, come sit over here. And I was like, <sighs> we hunted together. And then we ended up at another hunt together. Yeah. And then I met our president, um, Jess Rice, there. Then we showed up at another hunt. I'm like, you know what? I this need, is fate. This is, this I'm is like, we Lord need to be friends. To me. We are going to be best friends. Yeah, now. we're going to be friends. And so then we went and hunted together. And, you know, just to get to know each other, and we realized we had the same same thoughts each of us had a, a different story yes. and we're hitting all the dynamics and then our uh, treasurer who's now our board member she was this great duck hunter and she was a great dove hunter and we all were like you know we need we need to figure out how to make this educational and learn and it, it just clicked yeah and we reached out to conservations, we started our organization, we started planning events, and it just it just took off it during a strange off. time in COVID. And it was like, it couldn't have been a more perfect time because people were needing to get outside. And, and you needed it. I needed it, yeah. I needed it. It's I've, I've gone from hunting in groups to now I'm finding, you know, as stressful as life can be, Sometimes I don't have the intention to go out and harvest, yeah. but I'll throw on everything and I'll just go sit out mm -hmm. in the blind all day with my coffee. Y'all can judge me. I always got, there's some right there. Yeah, right you and now. me both. I got one down there too. Well, yeah. it's my tea. And I've, I've had my best naps outside um, without even speaking it. My friends and family know if I say I'm going hunting, my phone doesn't ring. I, does, I don't get a text. I just, I get to relax for six or 12 hours. Yeah and just then go back to adulting, which I need a refund on it. Does your family story. think you've lost your mind? They did at first. And I've had a, I had a couple of family members that weren't very encouraging. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, I mentioned they are inviting herself over for dinner. And it's, it's funny, like even my mom, she's like, I'm not even coming over there. I'm not eating that. And then yeah. now she'll come over and she'll eat. And she goes, that was good. That was really good. What, what did we it? eat? What are we eating And tonight? it's like, mom <laughs> is just store-bought chicken from the store. And then she's disappointed, like, yeah. oh, that wasn't pheasant. No, mom, it wasn't yeah. pheasant. Um, then there's, my family are still not outdoorsy. And I have a couple that will go out and yeah. hunt with me. But they're supportive in other ways. Like my first year when they saw I was serious, they all chipped in and bought me a 10-day cooler. Yeah. Um, they've chipped in and got me gift cards to Cabela's. And it seems like it may be a gift, but I think it's purely selfish. Because the more I hunt, the more they can come over and eat. Cause <laughs> They're, they'll put in They're requests. Like, I love and, medicine burgers. Yes, and and we we try when we cook our food, we try to do it the non traditional. Like if if I'm out pheasant hunting and someone gives me a recipe and it starts with, yeah, just use a can of cream up, uh, I'm done. I was like, can we not cheat and want to put everything in a crock pot exactly. with a can of cream of chicken? I want my pheasants sauteed and white wine and Ooh. mushrooms and onions. You're speaking my love and, language right yeah. now. <laughs> it's like just because it's wild game doesn't mean you have to always make venison tacos. Try yeah. something different. Yeah. We do duck pho, goose yeah. pho, venison pho. 
I mean, we do lots of international foods where we'll substitute it with wild game. Yeah. We just we like to have fun with mm -hmm. it. So. so how many women do you think your organization has impacted so far? Uh, we actually ran numbers and I can 100% say over 400, but I'm sure the number is more than that. We do have repeats. So I haven't removed the repeats out of those numbers, but that's just in the that's Kansas City metropolitan women. area. That's not including when we have our annual women's weekend event, which is 75 to 80 women, or when we're, we just started New York and California. I haven't gotten the numbers back on that. but So tell me about this annual women's weekend. What does that look like? It's called Go Wild, and it's Go Where You Lead Discovery. And basically we offer multiple classes. I think previous year and last year we had over 30. Mm -hmm. um, it ranged from night hikes, uh, stargazing, uh, we did mentored hunts, fishing, uh, make your own walking stick, uh, stained building glass, a fire. I saw that in some building a stuff. fire, primitive fires yeah. with tools that you have, hatchet throwing, knife throwing. Firearms ranging from muzzle loading, which is becoming very popular oh, very in our popular. circle. Yeah, yeah. muzzle loading was, has been very fun, especially the instructor. We try to make it um, all women instructors, but we're not limited. Like yeah. I mean, we we love when men help, but if we can have a woman instructor, we'll definitely yeah. try to have a woman yeah. instructor. It's um, hard because. Geographically, you know, there's there's very capable women and men, but mm -hmm. sometimes there's more men around, and it's easier just to have it them is. come in and help you. you it know? is so like I don't okay. know any uh, yeah. muzzleloading women, yeah, especially that would be willing to instruct. So we have the same guy, which he the ladies love him. He's very patient. Yeah, it, him and his wife are a package deal. We make her come in and do stuff too, and um, we don't know. Uh, we now have one female trapper that I believe she finished her certification and the cool thing about her is not only is she a hunter and a trapper she's also a beauty pageant wow so it's like you know I love it when I hear especially people that don't know me I would have never thought that you hunt I never would have never thought that you would shoot guns and I'm like oh thanks yeah it's like yes yeah, you never know it's incredible how every woman's journey or everyone's journey kind of leads them in a different way. And, you know, your illness that you've overcome, which glory to God, um, has led you to transform the lives of so many others. You're really going out there, your boots on the ground, you're inspiring women. And then your group is training, educating, empowering, making women feel comfortable and safe to try something that has historically been, you know, very male dominated. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, women in shooting sports, women in hunting, um, we are as welcome as anybody else. Exactly. And, and I love that about our sport. There's no limitations that women put on themselves apart from the ones that it's in our head. Yeah. Right? Like we can get out there and do the same things. We can. And it's 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 just even it's more fun and it's greater when we're doing it together as a group. Like we're a nonprofit. We partner with people that do it as a business. Yeah. It's it's there's enough outdoors for everybody and it's you know, some, some people assume that all these different organizations are in competition. And it's like, how can you be in competition with nature? Mm -hmm. It's like not one organization can dominate and control all of nature and everything that's available. Yeah. So whereas you can function as separate entities, it doesn't hurt to come together and, and work with each other just so I can introduce my circle to your circle. Yeah. It's like we don't need... Our organization doesn't have a mindset of, you have to be loyal to wilderness. It's like, no, um, we're providing you a way to go and discover your own journey. And hey, if you found out about another organization, why don't you share, share their information so we can go see what they're about and we can refer people to go check them out too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the women that are listening, what would you say their first steps should be to join or get involved in wilderness? Obviously, you said, you know, reaching out to you, Bria, mm -hmm. like a 
slip one, slide one into the DM. Yeah. Uh, like, email. I like yeah. to say that because it's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, but email, I mean, is there a website? So our website is wildhernes.org, and it's W-I-L-D-H-E-R-N-E-S-S. Um, our Instagram is the same, uh, except there's a underscore wildhernes underscore. Our Facebook is wildhernes. Um, if you know us personally, you can DM us. My Instagram is pink shears, one word, spelled just like the word pink and shears, like pinking shears, cutting shears. Um, you can email us at um, Will Turnus. Uh, let me give you my email address because I forgot our main one. It's Sharenda, S H A R E N D A dot wilderness at gmail.com. I do check my email regularly, except it won't happen this week. <laughs> um, just you find us on social media, you email us any question, we have someone that answers within 24 hours. I may even be the one answering. Unless so. you're in the field, and then unless it might I'm take in a the field, 24 hours. But we have we have eight people that have access to our accounts to monitor just for that. So what yeah. an incredible opportunity for ladies and uh, new hunters and shooting sports enthusiasts to connect with a phenomenal group of like-minded women that have all. You all, we we all have a story, and yeah. everybody is unique in our story. But the fact that we're all brought together in the same place is really special. And yes. um, I encourage all of you that are listening and watching to reach out if you or someone you know want to get more involved in hunting or shooting sports. Um, check out Wilderness, and and I also want to thank our great partners, Ruger. Onyx, Safari Club International. You guys go to my website, PursueTheWild.com, click the discount tab. I've got some great discounts from our partners that I want to make sure you all get the best deal on our partner gear. So do that. And we appreciate you for joining us. Thank you for and having time me on. Out of this shot show craze. Yeah. Um, and spending some time with us and sharing your story and your heart and your journey. And we're just so grateful that you're out there and you are inspiring and you're literally transforming lives. And I, um, it's an honor to have you on the podcast. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and meet you in person. You. Um, I've We've been, been following trying you this for a year. year. Yeah. We've been trying. We've been yeah. trying. But it's, yeah. well, like, where are you going to be? <laughs> it's hard to get together, but I'm so grateful yeah. that we did. And Thank that you. And I can share your story and your journey. And hopefully this will inspire other ladies and get them involved. And if you guys also want a mentor, reach out because Please obviously it, it takes a village all of this for us to all be successful we all have to work together and um, I encourage all of you that want a mentor as well to reach out mm -hmm. and get involved with wilderness as well please do thank you thank you I appreciate you I appreciate right, you, you guys this is uh, this episode <laughs> of the wild nine cut podcast we're out thank you Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with Top Rut that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through Hunting Fool Magazine. And to boot you guys, they've got tons of great specials through partners like Silencer Central, where if you're an OnX Elite member, you really benefit from those partnerships. So if you guys aren't a member, I encourage you go online to the OnX Hunt website, use code WILD20 at checkout, and you're going to save 20%. You're going to love being an Onyx Hunt Elite member. Hey, you guys. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at NSSF SHOT Show at the Ruger booth, and I am here with one of my favorite people, Miss Ray. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hong. Hong. <laughs> and uh, Ray is a good friend of mine and an incredible shooter and woman and, like, brilliant human. And, um... I can't believe we've never podcasted. <laughs> well, we've both been busy, you know. You travel here, you go on your hunts, and I go on all my matches. Yeah, so. well, you are incredible. And so we've been shooting together, like, passively, like, 
a couple times a year, but we haven't done it in a long time. Yes, yes. How many yes. years do we look back at our last oh. Shot Show picture? What what year was that? Like that was seven years ago from Shot Show. Seven. Seven years ago, yeah. yeah. So we met and we started shooting together, and I was like aspirational that I want to be like Ray, <laughs> uh, because this lady took third in the two mile competition. Yeah, this year. the king of the two like, mile. Yep. I mean, you're just like yep. crushing it against the guys. <laughs> You're owning the space. You're incredible. And, um, man, I just, I can't say enough great things about you. Oh, well, thank you, Christy. And well, she's a, are you a, technically a doctor? No, no, what no. What is it that you are exactly? Um, I just graduated with my master's in biomedical engineering. Biometrics. So, needless to say, Ray has the brain of an engineer, <laughs> and she can build and make and do uh, prosthetics and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. 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 So, um, you're like... Did your adult job for a minute? Did my adult job for a minute, and um, I love shooting. That's where my passion was, yeah. and you know, I couldn't be in the OR for, you know, 24/7. You know, yeah. I'd rather be on the range or some sort of mountain. You know, shooting. Yeah. Remember, like the time we went to Montana? Oh yeah, oh, that gosh. was so fun. <laughs> we need to do it again. We yes. definitely yes. need to do that again. So walk <laughs> everybody through like how you started shooting because I think there's a lot of people that can get a lot of inspiration from that. Okay, so I grew up not shooting, uh, nowhere near guns at all. Like I, my family's not into it. The people I've dated wasn't into it. But I've always watched action movies. Always, always interested in guns yes um and then so one day for my birthday i treated myself <laughs> she bought herself a birthday present <laughs> I bought myself a birthday present uh so i picked a rifle mm -hmm. off the shelf and i paid mm -hmm. in cash and that's how i started shooting long range so you yeah. went and you're like okay well i want to shoot this gun but i'm going to do it i'm going to own this space because that's how you are you're really competitive <laughs> who did you start training with so when i first started i uh had a gunsmith and he knew of a training company down south called Max Ordnance. So uh -huh. I saw the, started following them on Instagram and I had seen that they had a opening for one mm -hmm. of their classes. So it was really weird because I've never been to a precision rifle match yeah. or a class. So I was yeah. kind of like uneasy. I didn't know what I was expecting. And also at the time they were saying, hey, this is a remote cabin. There's no, um, it's, there's no electricity. It's not like connected to the grid. There's no cell phone service. And I'm like, I'm going into the middle of nowhere with like a bunch of guys and guns that I don't know. I'm like, this is kind of dangerous. Were you intimidated? I was just like, you know, this might be one of those bad decision things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it but, turned out you were perfectly safe. Yeah, well, I'm like, well, my gunsmith knows him. And then I was like, I contacted the company. I'm like, hey, I want to do a meet and greet before I go down there. Yeah. So one of the instructors did come up uh, to NorCal. They were doing something up there. And then they came into where I was working and I met. I'm like, oh, you are, you're awesome. I, yeah. you, you guys are good. So I was very comfortable. And he had a few other girls uh, working at the time yeah. there. So that's how I started Precision Rifle was to take that course. and. I've been with them for many, many years and started like working and teaching there too. And that's how I started. That's such an yeah. incredible space. Like for you to like step into as if you're an adult onset shooting sports enthusiast. Yes. Yes. I remember when I went into the store, they're like, do you want to shoot Mills or MOA? And I'm like, what? What? What are you talking what are you, about? Is this Fred or what? <laughs> what yeah. the who and the ha? And then even when I, uh, took the course this was a long time ago um and then i went to and i wasn't sure if i wanted to compete either yeah and i was like you know i got into this because i wanted to relax and i wanted a hobby that i can do by myself yeah you know if i wanted to yeah and i don't know i'm not really competitive yeah I you have an I'm engineering brain, so as soon as you got into guns you got into guns yeah i got into guns i deep dove into it and then uh I used to go to this range all the time, and one of the ROs, he was like, you know what, you should try competition. I know of one uh, down south, and I went, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was not ready. I had, I didn't have a sling. It was one of those field matches. Mm -hmm. I br brought my drag bag, and everyone's just kind of looking at me like weird, but it was great. I'm like, hey, I'm Ray. I'm new. Let me know if I did any, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Everyone was so nice. And uh, I had, uh, at the time, 
dope. Yes. Like, but it was data on previous engagement. Yes. Like, I did not have a ballistic calculator. And uh, so this guy, and it was a different atmosphere. At the time, I didn't, I yeah. don't know any of this. Yeah. And he's like, what's your BC? I'm like, BC what? You're like a well, the who? And the <laughs> who? <laughs> and, um, and it's so interesting now, just looking back at all the knowledge I've yeah. learned throughout the years. I've also kept like my original scope. I mean, it doesn't even dial anymore. Yeah. And it said sniper on the side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like $64. But you know what? I got. I started with that stuff, right? And it worked. Yes. And it got yes. you hooked. I loved it. Yes. And it got you shooting. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And you've shot a multiple of disciplines. Like, you've shot PRS, NRL, yes. competition dynamics. Yes. Three yes. guns. I do not shoot three guns. You haven't shot any three guns. Okay. No, there's too many guns. I travel too much. I can't. Ah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, what? So tell us about your first match. Like, how did you? What did you prepare? How did you get into that? Well, the first match. Yeah. Like, like where was it? At? Do you remember your first match? You've done so many, you probably don't remember your first. Well, one. my first match was the one about I just told you about, the yeah. drag bag. Yeah. It was in Avenal, California. Um, I I woke up like at three in the morning to drive to that match, yeah. and. It was a field match, and then you get squatted up, yeah. and you know, like a couple people adopted me into yeah. like their team, and that was it. You just, you know, you walk along a course and you, you shoot these yeah. targets and stuff like that. Um, that was it. Yeah. So you are you customize your own rifles for these matches too? Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> The first rifle I bought was a Remington 700 and 308. Yeah. And once oh, I started. Oh, that didn't last long. <laughs> it did not last long. Um, so next door was a custom rifle builder. And I had met him uh, right when I bought my rifle. Yeah. And he's like, oh, here, this is the guns that I build. Yeah. And he was like, oh, these are like, I'm like, how much are these? They're like $6,000. And I'm like, oh, my God. That was, that's huge. Well, it is huge. It's a staggering number. Yes, like, yes. It's a Mo shocking number. Mostly from someone who has not grown up yeah. in the rifle. Like, I wouldn't, yeah. I was like, no way. I'm never, ever going to be. I go to Hawaii avoid. twice. Yeah, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Even like a magazine was like $75. I'm like, $75 for this piece? Like, what? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know? It was just so different. Yeah. So different. And then I started shooting um, my 308, and I freaking fell. Three months later, I had one on <laughs> the <Yep>. field. <laughs> yeah. What caliber did you go to from 308? I shot 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay. Yeah. That's This was in 2015. Yeah. yeah. So there's like also when you talk to people with their shooting career, what I feel like happens a lot is there's a progression of calibers. Yes. Like where you start yes. and where you go. Yes. And it also progresses as the industry morphs and changes. I mean, 308 was always like, oh, yeah, you got 308. We're going to go shoot yeah. tons of ammo. At the time, it was great during its heyday. and But ballistically now, it's, it's not... It, you know, doesn't stack up to... It's know, not as flat shooting, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you switch to a 6.5. What are you shooting now, or does it just depend? It really depends. Mostly when um, the pandemic was going on, yeah. components were really Very scarce. difficult to find. Yes, so I have, like, a variety of rifles. They're like, okay, well, I have these primers. Okay, I can find these bullets. Okay, so this is, will be good for my 6.5 cream more. Oh, I found 6 mil bullets. Okay, let's use my 6XC. Oh, this powder is available. I'll shoot my 6 BRA. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's how I did it throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but right so now. So a lot of the calibers you guys are listening right now, like, well, what is she talking about? What are these calibers? <laughs> a lot of these calibers, you know, they're kind of wildcat calibers. Yes. And you do have to reload. Yes. Like you can't, yes. like, you know, the six millimeter Creedmoor, obviously you can go to Hornady and buy ammo for that, yes. like match grade ammo and yes. buy that and, and go. But some of the calibers Ray's talking about, like you, you have to kind of Reload Take yourself. a step even back and be like, okay, I have to reload for this now too. Yes, and yes. that's why you're talking components because you're so into it now that you're like making your own recipes in your kitchen for yes. your secret sauce <laughs> that gets you those wins on the field. Yes, but when I was working a lot, I was like, okay, well, I don't have time to reload all the time, so I am going to build a six grade more. You know, so I have a impact precision action where you can have pre-fit barrels so you just yeah. like screw it on so i have a 6xc for that i have a 6bra but i also wanted to shoot factory ammo because yeah. it's always so nice to grab some off yeah. the shelf right and then uh, so i built a six creed more 
And then I also have a um, six five Creedmoor with a proof barrel for okay. hunter matches. That's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then your two mile matches. What are you shooting? Oh, um, for the past few years, I've been shooting my favorite three seventy five Shy Tech. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's it like being behind that all day long? I mean, it's probably got to weigh what thirty five pounds. 40. 40 pounds. 40 I pounds. was off by five pounds. pounds. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I figured because um, I have a, my um, 300 PRC, my Ruger Precision Rifle, that I shoot for my ELR match with Night Force. That thing's 30 pounds. Yeah. And maybe 35 pounds. I can't remember exactly what it weighs. <laughs> I think it's 30. But I put a bunch of XLR weights on the front. Yes. Because yes. it wasn't heavy enough. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm little. I need yeah, some weight just on a little this bit, thing. Yeah. Put a little weight on the front of this thing. <laughs> I remember um, before I shot like a real ELR match, right? I had won a 338 Lapua mm -hmm. from HS Precision um, mm -hmm. during one of these matches. And I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to get into ELR. I'm gonna take this rifle out. The war rifle itself was a hunting one, you know, but that's all I had, so I brought it. Yeah. And I put a scope on it. And the rifle, since it's for hunting, it was like eight pounds. Oh. Oh, yeah. A lot. Of recoil, Fuck. yeah. Ooh, and yeah. I so <laughs> I brought it out, and I'm like, <gasps> I'm never shooting this again. No, I was like, order the heaviest chassis, all the weight kits, yes. the heaviest scope, everything. I'm just weighing that thing down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you have to, especially when you're little. Like, you know, when you're in a match or a competition setting, and you are competing against a man <laughs> who's 220 pounds. Yes. He's going to shoulder that rifle and take that recoil with yes. a lot more ease than you as like a buck 20. You yeah. Know? And it's going to, I mean, you're talking about a hundred pounds difference. There's a disparity of body size there. <laughs> um, and, and they've got a lot more body mass to yes. absorb that recoil yes. than you do. You're teeny tiny. I think one of my first matches, I had the camera set up and you can actually see me disappear after every shot from the camera. Like it would, the rifle would shove you yeah, so far. Yeah, back 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 and then until i disappeared you can only see the rifle <laughs> they're like where did ray go she's out of camera frame camera. <laughs> that's so funny yeah and i um i remember the first couple of times we shot together like i had never shot a match i didn't mm. really know anything about not i didn't know much about distance shooting i had done some training with magpul core um, but you were so gracious, like you were like, girl, let me show you this and that. And that's what I love about the shooting community is the, the ladies in this community, like everybody helps each other out. Yeah. You know, you helped me out yeah. with gear and mm -hmm. showing me how like you practice off shooting off paint ladders and yeah. I mean, you Tripods. threw up like this mini obstacle course and you're like putting a timer to me and like, go! And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I, you know, it, I don't care where, what setting you're in. The minute somebody throws a timer on, like something happens to your adrenaline. I, I, I swear, once that timer, when you hear that beep, yes. half your brain falls off and lands yes. on the floor. Literally. Like, it's, you're like, why did I do that? Yeah. What? <laughs> or you like put your mag in a pocket or something and you can't remember where you put it and you're going to do like a reload and you're like, where's my mag? <laughs> but that's where muscle memory really comes in yes. in training is yes. having a system. Yes getting muscle memory and having it to where everything has become second nature. Yeah, your checklist, like, okay, like, do I have can yes. or do I have this? Did I dial, you know, and everything like that. Yeah, and did I forget to dial down if I'm going far to near? Yeah. And like, all of these things, or am I using reticles? Or, like, I mean, there's yeah. so much. Or if you're doing, like, that extreme range and you're like, did you dial down or are you on the wrong revolution for the next stage? Be kind and rewind. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I'm going to start at zero. <laughs> Where's that zero stop? Where's yeah. that zero stop? <laughs> Let's go back down to the bottom and count our way up. And that, I didn't even think about that. Like, your revolutions on those long-range, extreme long-range rifle matches have yeah. to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're spinning that turret. And, like, you take people that are not used to spinning a turret, they're like, ah, ah, you're twisting the cap. Don't move the cap Don't at zero. And you're like, ee, ee, ee. I mean, that's what you do. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. When yeah. you're shooting in, yeah. in precision world, and um, yeah. so you you are extremely OCD uh, with your gear and your yes. components yes. and how you do things. Yes, and I love that about you. That's why you're great at um, engineering prosthetics for people because <laughs> you want things to be perfect, like to exacting standards. Well, if you're shooting like two miles and beyond, you have to be. Yeah. Like during my. Uh, two mile competition like the king of two mile i'm the most anal with that yeah like i have this um 
press from amp annealing and it measures the fours and I will put it in order and I'll like mark it like one, two, three, four, five, yeah. depending on like the pressures and stuff like that. Uh, there's also like other weird stuff that we do <laughs> or that I do, right, yeah. um, for that match. Because if you just have like maybe like a 10 foot spread for your velocity, you're gonna sail over that target. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And I can't imagine I mean, two miles, if you have a half minute gun, what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? What is the size of the group on that? Like, I don't even know how to figure that. Like, I would have to literally like sit down with a piece of paper and be like, what does this even mean? Like, okay, I'll go from a half inch at a hundred yards. Okay. And a thousand yards we're five inches. What is that at two miles? Like, I don't, I can't compute this. My math, I'm going to do girl math. One, two, I don't know. I'm just going to plug it into my calculator. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so your ballistic calculator, are you running, are you running like applied ballistics or are you running Ford off? I'm running applied ballistic, but I want to try Ford off. You know, I heard really good things about that. Yeah. The yeah. Doppler radar system. It's yeah. always, it's always, you know, curious to see, you know, um, you know, what gear people are running. If you had one range bag to pick, like what is your go-to range bag? It depends on the discipline probably. Yes, it does because I have different range bags for different disciplines. Like I have like an ELR one and I have a PRS or Hunter Match one, you know, where mm -hmm. I need smaller components. Mm -hmm. um, but ELR, like I need like my like shooting bags that are like heavy, different style of bags yeah. and like equipment, bigger bipods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your favorite bipods? Oh, I love Accutac. Which ones? Accutac. Accutac. Yes, okay. yes. And That's I actually just right. got a new one from them they develop like especially for elr shooting extreme long range shooting um one of the issues i had you can actually see it in like a video when i'm at the competition when you go to a different target and you have to adjust the height of your rifle i will have to physically break position and go to the front of my rifle because i can't reach that it's taking time that. is what that's doing exactly it's taking time. exactly yeah. So they had made this new hydro bipod, uses hydraulic fluid to push this piston up and down. So it moves your gun up and down. And yep. That yep. sounds real fancy yep. and I might have to get that. <laughs> so is that, are you running Arca Swiss or is that on a pick rail? Or do they have it for both maybe? You can have, you can switch it out. Yeah. So I That's actually handy. switch it out all the time um, because I run Arca for like hunter matches and PRS, and I run Picatinny rail for ELR rifles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got, it just depends on your application. And yeah. so many people ask that, like, hey, what guns do you like to shoot? And I'm like, well, what are we doing? What, see, I just got asked, I'm like, well, I have different guns for yeah. everything. What are we doing? Because every, this is why Ruger makes so many guns, because yeah. What are we doing? I mean, yeah. depending on what we're doing, we're going to pick, you know, different firearms, different you're talking cartridges. You're about a pistol, you're talking about a rifle. Are we hunting? Are we not? Yeah, are what are we doing exactly? Yeah. 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 No, and that's um, that's a great thing is to have so many options and opportunities. And there's such a progression of gear and technology. And yes. I, I really believe that yes. so much of the innovation that happens in the firearms industry starts in with, with rifles, especially. Um, in what you guys are doing in the competition world. Yes. Because you guys yeah. are really setting the tone in that long range precision competition to what the industry does later on. Well, and then it also like makes it harder every year because yeah. there's more competitors. You're like, yeah. well, everybody can shoot this target. Okay, let's make it small. Let's make it half the size. Yeah. You know? And let's make them do this and this and this. And then you put your like the guns to the test. You're like, oh, well, I've had this problem when I'm out, you know, climbing a mountain or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I shot this match and this whatever broke. So you need to make it more durable. Yeah. You know, so like, hey, I like this kind of mount. And then you maybe change like the chassis or something or the stock. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, and that's what I love about you, too, is you are literally working on your own firearms. You're yes. not having somebody else do yes. it. There's not like, oh, yeah. my husband set my gun up for me. And I don't know why we're doing this stuff. Like you <laughs> genuinely know. And I'll tell you, like, none of the competitor shooters, competitive shooters that I've talked to today have somebody else work on their guns. Oh, no. Like, no. everybody works on their own stuff. Yes. Everybody yes. learns the function 
and the, the purpose of components and how to make them work best. And if they have issues, you know, you can't ship off your gun to get it fixed. You no, gotta be able to figure it fix, out. Yeah, and you're also, you're usually like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So you have oh, to have literally all the in the tools. middle of nowhere in a sand trap usually. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you have to have all the tools. Or rain. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people that mm -hmm. reload their their ammo is just totally doesn't function because of the moisture in mm -hmm. the air and mm -hmm. and or yeah. you like have you know sticking bolts or I mean we're just problems with yeah. sand and rain and yeah. these elements and moon dust. Like you have to be able yeah. to know how to navigate that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you're brilliant at it. Well, I've had um, a lot of flops. Yeah. I've had a lot of experiences, how about that? Yeah. I think one of my first, the first PRS match I went to um, was a uh, NorCal precision shooting. And I had my instructor, he's like, yeah, I uh, moved your scope for you. Um, you know, everything's like torqued down. And then the second day, uh, so he did that at night. So yeah. the first day I did pretty good. The second day, I was like, why am I missing? What is going on? And I was yeah. so new at the time. I didn't know how to diagnose things. Yeah. And then so I had to go like pull out of the match and then go zero. And I'm like, why is it off? And then someone's like, your scope is moving in here. Oh no, it was loose. It was your loose. Was loose it, or your scope no, was just the rings were loose. Oh, and boy. I was like, and you can see it. Cause like the dust, you're like, it moved. And I'm like, oh. and from that point, you I learned a hard stuff. lesson. Do everything. Nobody's gonna care about your stuff as you much do. as as much as you do. Exactly. So, 100%. You do everything. And if you get mad, I mean, if something breaks, it's on you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love I love the uh, lady empowerment thing, but I, and I hope you know because you are. You know, you got you started doing shooting sports and participating in shooting sports. Yeah. Not when you're. It's not like your dad was showing you at the range no, as a little girl. Like no. you grew up and then we're like, hey, I want to shoot this. some guns. Yeah. This is really something anybody can get into. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. And you'll see like kids out there, yeah. like underage, um, and they do great. They yeah. do great. And you, you have on the opposite side of the spectrum, people get into it like in their seventies. Yeah. You know, like I have this couple, um, Carlton and Miranda. They are starting ELR a few years ago, and they're killing. They're having fun. Yeah. They're. You know, you don't have to even do well. You're just mm -hmm. going to have that experience yeah. and share it with your loved ones. Yeah. Um, have a hobby. I feel fulfilled when I have my own hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you know, the thing is, is like you can go to a match and you don't have to actually even like compete. You can just go yeah. and have a good time. That's one of the things like yeah. NRL Hunter has. Yeah. Like you can go, they'll, if you don't have a firearm, if you don't have the equipment and you want to try it, yeah. they have a loaner program that's really cool. You can yeah. just borrow someone's, gear, well, it's their gear. Um, and go have a good time and see if it's something you want to do. And a lot of people, like for me personally, you know, one of the reasons I shot matches is because I wanted to be a better hunter. Yeah. Like not because mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm some super epic competitive shooter. Yeah. Um, it was because I wanted to be better at hunting. And yeah. that really, I mean, it was the driving force for me to do that because I could be more effective, more ethical. And I had a lot more opportunity for success because I could shoot better. Yeah. And everyone has a different, like goal yeah. you know different drive like other people would be like i just want to hang out with my friends yeah like i don't care how i place i just want to have fun after the match i want to barbecue want to have a couple beers yeah. um there's this other match Good fellowship yeah there's this other match that we go to um at competition dynamics there's this lake by there and they bring their whole families mm -hmm. and they bring the rvs yeah. so their spouses will stay at the rv with the kids and they like go out on the lake they have these big floaty things mm -hmm. barbecue all day and they're having fun while um the other spouses like you know competing in the match they're yeah. out for like maybe three hours and it's great and yeah. i love that it's i really really do like that you can use it as a vacation yeah. you know mm -hmm. heck yeah so what advice would you give someone who's like man i really want to start you know, I, I want to learn how to shoot a rifle better. Where, okay. where, where would you send them? What's the advice you'd give them? I would definitely... Whether they want to compete or not, they just want to learn. Yeah, I would definitely, like, go to a precision um, class, mm -hmm. precision rifle class. And I would, like, recommend, like, the one I went to, Max Warner, if you got in uh, a SoCal or a Modern Day Sniper with Philip mm -hmm. Vallejo and Kaylin. Mm -hmm. And you got, what, rifles only in Texas. Mm -hmm. Uh, who else? Jake Vibbert does some online training. Yeah, Jake mm -hmm. Vibbert. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. 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 So yeah. if you can't get out to these matches, you can just do yeah. online. 
Oh, mm-hmm. there's one in Oklahoma, the JTAC. They do mm-hmm. really well. Um, great competitors. I yeah. recommend their class too. That's yeah. awesome. It's um, there's so much. It changes so quickly. Are you getting your gear information at Shot Show, or are you seeing it at matches? So, like, when you learn about something new, where are you typically hearing about it from? From your peers or where? New gear. Mm, a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, a little bit of both. Uh, sometimes companies will like, hey, we're having this, like the hydro bipod. Mm-hmm. I knew about that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but some of the other stuff, I'll see it like people run it. People who are in D at these matches. Yeah. And you're like, what is that? You're like, oh, what's that? that? They're like, don't look at this. No, don't look at that. Don't take no. any pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Working on the patent. <laughs> Just blur it out. Yeah, blur it out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can't photograph this gun. Get away from me. It doesn't exist. <laughs> All of that. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. It's true, though. Yeah, yeah. A lot of R&D going on. <laughs> so how do people follow you? How do people find you and follow along on your journey, get inspiration and in okay. what you're doing? Um, I have an Instagram, and it's uh, nine underscore dolls. And I also have a YouTube, nine dolls. So you guys, check out Miss Ray online. Um, <laughs> she's a great friend. She's a great ambassador for shooting sports. And I just have the most respect for you getting out and doing such an incredible job in shooting sports, being a great example for other women of somebody to really look up to. Um, I totally look up to you, everything that you're doing. Like, the woman is like a mad scientist with her glasses on, (laughs) reloading her ammo, and she's like, it's crazy. I love following your stuff. It's great, it's it's fun, it's entertaining, and um, hopefully uh, the viewers here will check out what you're doing too. Well, it was great talking to you, Christy. Yeah, thanks for taking time out of your busy SHOT Show schedule to be here as well. Uh, And thank you all for tuning in. We love our partners. We love Ruger. We love SCI. We love Onyx Maps, Onyx Hunt. Um, So you guys, check out my website, PursueTheWild.com. Go on my website, watch some videos, or you guys also click the discount tab. I've got some great discounts from partners, and I want you guys to get the best deal possible on gear as usual. So we're done at SHOT Show for now. Well, I was going to, she left me hanging. I was like, oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. I'm like, oh, (laughs) okay. (laughs) When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter Ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.